uh, Evan Meenan has his hand up, and uh, we'll hear from him. And then Senator White had a question. Uh, thank you very much. And again, just for the record, it's Evan Meenan from the Department of State's Attorneys. I, I just wanted to take a minute very briefly and, and respond to uh, Matt Valerio's testimony, because it, it concerned me that maybe some, some folks were were misconstruing my testimony and thinking that the department was advocating for some type of change to the self-defense standard as it existed before Act 27, which is, which is not true. As, as I stated, you know, we support S-184 even in its current form. Um, it was not the intent to try and our intent to try and change the self-defense standard. We think S-184 you know, clarify, helps to clarify that Act 27 was not supposed to change that standard as reflected in the letter that Senator Sears mentioned. Um, and, uh, and, and as I mentioned, if, if, the, if the committee wants to recommend that the, ar the archaic uh, list of relationships in subsection one uh, be replaced with um, the just and necessary defense of a person's own life or the life of another person, the department would support that as well. Thank you. Okay. All right. Senator White. So before the suggestion came up about removing that, my suggestion was going to be that we should just add the language about the <clears throat> common law that you and Judge Zone, I believe it was, that talked about and, and pass it. But I don't have strong feelings about removing that language if it doesn't do anything harmful. No, I, I think we, um, thank you. I, I think, Eric, you can, I think what I'm hearing from all everyone is that it would be desirable to first consider striking um, whether or not we strike the crimes is a question for the committee, but adding a section that makes clear we're not impacting common law. Uh, yep, that makes sense. I, I've heard that as well from, from the so, committee and the witnesses. And I, I see the language in the aggravated assault statute I think will fit in perfectly. So just, you'd say something like the section shall not be construed to limit or infringe upon defenses granted common law. That seems to be exactly the concept the committee is looking for. Yeah, and I think um, since one one has been attempt to make clear, I don't, um, and has been in law forever. Um, I'm not sure I want to change that um, from the way it is in the bill. Um, it's too where whether we want to, I believe. Where we, where the, we could put in a period right after um, in the forceful of violent suppression of a crime instead of listing all those different crimes. So if it had to be, a, so as I understand it, if you did that put the period there, you're saying it, the crime needs to be forceful and it needs to be violent. And I, rather than describing what crimes they might be. Is that what I heard from the witnesses? That was what I heard from the witnesses. So it would read, if the person reasonably believed that he, that the person or any other person was an imminent peril, and that it was necessary to repel that peril with deadly force in the forceful of, Brian, of violent suppression of a person. Uh, yeah, I'll stop right there in the violent suppression of a crime. I'd also like to push no, Nick but... for a, if I could make a plug for the archaic list in subsection one. I, I look at that list as back in the days when, um, frankly, a man had control over his family. And um, I, I would just push for the elimination of that archaic list. Do any of the witnesses have a problem with that or any of the committee members? Like Joe suggest 
If, if, if I may, uh, Evan yep. Meenan from the Department of State's Attorneys, I, I don't know that I was following that correctly, so perhaps this is more of a question, but if, if two was changed to in the forceful or violent suppression of a crime, I don't, since the word, because of the word suppression, I'm not sure that's the same thing as saying a crime being committed with force or violence. It's right. more about that's, force or violence. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. That's what I intended. Pick up. Question now is, should we drop the names in the cut names? Yeah. yeah. Well, before we get to that, Senator Sears, I just want to follow up on what Evan was saying, what you were just mentioning about your intent. So now I'm not sure I'm following what you're suggesting for two. Uh, are you saying that you want to rewrite that so that the forceful or violent suppression it would say necessary to repel the peril with, with deadly force in the Uh, right. forceful or violent suppression of a person tending to commit a violent crime or, or, or to commit any crime? Violent or a violent crime. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I, I, uh, I think we're running afoul of the keep it, keep it simple standard. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's fine the way it is. Uh, again, I would suggest if again. You refer, if you refer to common law, then you're covering everything else. That's right. Exactly. So I don't think we need to change two. The question, the only question is, do you change one? I guess you would just change that to unjust and necessary defense of a person's own life or the life of another. Yep. I'd be interested to hear from Judge Zone whether he thinks there's any problem doing that. Well, what I'm going to do is is ask Eric to redraft the bill, the strike call, send it out to everybody that's here, and receive comments next. I think we have some time built in next Friday, Peggy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, next Friday. Hold on, let me just look. We have S-265 from 9 to 1045, and then we have Judge Novotny. So it Wait depends on that. 265. is the criminal threatening. I can't hear you. Sorry. Go ahead. We could do it at 1030. 1030. Okay. Put on this one at 1030 if Eric's available. Yeah, that's fine with me. Thank you. Okay. So uh, we can criminal threatening. Um, we, we all, I only have two witnesses, and there may be some others who want to testify at a future. But I just had Jim Condos and uh, EJ Donovan. Anybody else who should be on that list for yep. uh, criminal threatening? Yep, that's probably, it. probably. Oh, I know who it, it would be. Um, the state's attorney in Washington County, and I never pronounce his last name right. Rory. Rory, yes. Rory Tebow. You want me to get Thank him you. to do? Rory yeah, Tebow. we'll just stick to those three witnesses for Friday. Uh, it's a, it's a complex issue, and so. <clears throat> well, the, secre I mean, the what, secretary of state asked for Chris Winters as well to be added. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I figured. They, he's like. You know, I don't think condos can go anywhere. No. <laughs> okay, so is everybody okay with that? And the, everybody who's here will, uh, who's here on, on S26, S184 will get a copy of the redraft 
from Eric, as well as the committee, the redraft can be posted. And then we, uh, if people aren't able to be here next Friday and you have any comments on it, you can certainly send them to, to Eric. Sounds like they're coming to some kind of resolution here. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks, Senator Steers. I'll send it out and uh, everyone can take a look. Thanks for working on that. Okay, Mr. thank Chair. you. Um, what's that? Thanks for working on that. My conscience has been bothering me since I let this slip by last time. Oh, certainly want your conscience cleared, Senator. I don't know if that'll <laughs> actually clear his whole conscience, but. <laughs> we'll lay around this. Peace, real. <laughs> by the way, the did did every everybody hear the sad news today? Meatloaf died. Yeah. What? Meatloaf died at age seventy-five. Mm -hmm. The singer, like a bat out of hell. I gotta let her to kick you. Frequently used his, one of his songs as a. Half a loaf is no is better than none at all, or something like that. So we'd cite that when we were doing a bill, doing the appropriations, and arguing over how much somebody should get. All right, Judge Zone, you want to introduce us to Judge Jerome? All right, and I hope I pronounced his name right, so I should have let you just do it. Let me make sure. I, I think I saw Judge Jiron come on. There he is. Jiron, so, yes. Okay. So good morning again, Tom Zone, Chief Superior Judge. And this morning, I have the pleasure of introducing one of our newest Superior Court judges who was sworn in on January 3rd, and that is Justin Jiron. Justin, uh, Judge Jiron, is a graduate of the University of Vermont. He went to Albany Law School, where he graduated cum laude and also worked on the Law Review. After law school, he was uh, a law clerk, went into private practice, and in 2003, he became a deputy state's attorney with the Chittenden County State's Attorney's Office. He stayed in that position until the time of his appointment, and in 2016, he was designated to be the chief deputy state's attorney. There is no question that Judge Jiren is held in high regard by his former colleagues and the members of the bar. And at his swearing in, there was a number of comments made about him. And some of the words that were used were intelligent, respectful, and thoughtful. It was also commented that he was calm and unflappable. And I think it was State's Attorney Sarah George who commented that no matter how people were getting upset, he just had this very nice, calm demeanor. And I thought to myself at the time, well, that's good. He's going to need that as a judge. And then we also found out something about Judge Jiren that I think put it into even a better context. He has his private pilot's license. And so I thought, well, it's good that a judge is calm and unflappable. And it's really good that someone who is controlling you in an airplane is also calm and unflappable. And... I think as we go forward, you will see that the characteristics that were identified as making him an ideal candidate for his appointment will make him an ideal judge as he goes forward in his career. And so I'm proud to present uh, Judge Jiren. Thank you, Judge Jose. Thank you, Judge. Uh, I'm Dick Sears from Bennington County. Um, and I'll let the other members of the committee introduce themselves, starting with Senator Baruth. Uh, I'm Phil Baruth, representing Chittenden County. I'm Alice Nitka, representing Windsor County. I'm Jeanette White, representing Windham County. Hello again. Hello. Good morning, Judge Jiren. Calm and unflappable. Um, do I understand correctly that you're coming to Caledonia County? You do understand that, Senator Benning. That is a quality that I will very much appreciate. I'm Joe <laughs> Benning. I'm from Caledonia County, and I've been a 
trial attorney here for 38 years. I think he's suggesting that other judges who've been in Caledonia are not as dumb and unflappable. <laughs> Judge. Uh, I did not say that, Senator. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make it clear. <laughs> Got clarity on that. <clears throat> and tell us a little bit about your interest in becoming a judge and um, why you chose to apply for the position. And... Certainly. Uh, thank you, Senator Sears. And um, good morning to everybody. And thank you for making this time available for me to, uh, to meet with you. There, it's a, uh, it's interesting because you know I, I've been asked the question before. Why did I, uh, what made me interested in being a judge and and um, join the, the judiciary? And it's hard to come up with a. There's, there's really no short, easy answer except that when I st first became interested in being a lawyer, I was really interested in being uh, a prosecutor uh, early on. After some interest in being a police officer, and uh, pretty quickly after becoming a prosecutor, uh, as much as I enjoyed the um, the idea of being in court and uh, trying to achieve justice and upholding the law. Uh, as the years went by, more and more I became more interested in the process itself and the way the legal system worked. And it became clear to me that what I really, uh, uh, one of the things that became very important to me was that the the process and the the, uh, the system was fair and that it you know was fair to everybody. And as I sat in front of a lot of judges and appeared in front of a lot of judges over the years, I began to think, you know, I, I, I could see how they did their job and I appreciated the, the challenges they had. And over time, I just began to think that I would really enjoy that position. I think I, that I would, I would be um, well suited to it. I would enjoy being able to be someone that's in a sense protecting the system and uh, making it available and fair to, to other people to litigants. So that's sort of a long way of saying it's been a evolution over the years uh, for me. And, uh, but that's really the reason. I, I think that the, the courts are one of the most important institutions we have as a society and in this country and state. And if I can be someone that can serve in that capacity, and I think that I can be and will be, then, then I, uh, it was important that I made the, put in the application and, and put myself forward. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, you were a Chittenden County Deputy State's Attorney for a while, um, and that county has um, made certain decisions regarding prosecutions. Um, and as a judge, how do you how do you look at those decisions? I'm trying to be, um, you know, for example, not prosecuting certain crimes. And if, if you're in Caledonia County, where the prosecutor there may prosecute some of those crimes, how's that going to affect your uh, ability to uh, on the bench? Well, uh, certainly my experience in Chittenden is going to probably inform the way I approach cases going forward. But really, in my mind, you know, the legislature has enacted the laws, they're in place. And if one state's attorney chooses to enforce certain laws, either uh, chooses not to enforce ones or chooses to enforce them in a different way and seek different types of resolutions, uh, however they want to approach the cases, it's going to be my responsibility to look at the laws that are in place. And so uh, a case that might not be brought in Chinon County, may be brought in Caledonia County, uh, but that's the prom you know, that's the province of that state's attorney. And I certainly respect that. And I'll approach that case as I would any other case. In other words, I wouldn't uh, discount it just because it's something that may not have been brought in Chittenden County or may have been prosecuted differently in Chittenden County for that matter. Uh, it raises a, an issue that this committee has been confronted with many times, and that's geographical justice, where... Um, and we've seen it actually in the courts, as well as prosecutors, defense bar, et cetera, of how different crimes are dealt with differently. Um, we've been talking about a bill on, um, this, uh, lack of a better term, shoplifting, but in large amounts where the aggregate value is, is very high. And, and uh, uh, the, the people that 
certain stores are uncomfortable with what's been going on, obviously, and uh, concerned about the aggregate value of those. So I think that's one of the things that this committee and the House Committee on Judiciary have been long trying to deal with is this kind of geographic justice where somebody in Chittenden County commits a crime and that crime is either not even prosecuted or diverted and somebody in, I'll use the example of Caledonia County is uh, prosecuted and ends up going before the judge. Either there's a plea agreement or ends up in trial. That's really the reason for my question. Um, other questions for Judge Drew? Am I the only one with questions here? I'll just throw in a comment, Judge, that we will welcome you to Caledonia County. Thank you, Senator. I am uh, really looking forward to it. I had a chance to get up to Caledonia County uh, last week or the week before. Uh, most of our orientation has been remote and uh, really enjoyed meeting the staff and getting a chance to see the courthouse. And uh, I'm very excited to, to be up there. Are you going to be uh, co-assigned in Essex County as well? Yes, I'll be covering that as well. That's one of the last best kept secret in the court system. A clerk <laughs> usually asks you what you like in your coffee when you come in the door. That sounds like a welcoming place. Any other questions? I, I just have a thought. Um, yeah. In uh, doing judicial retention, one of the issues that um, regularly comes up is that um, that judges lose a lot of their friendships um, and contacts that they've had before because they're in such a different position. And I don't know if you're prepared for not having your friends or being able to <clears throat> hang out, so to speak, with um, people you did before. And I know that's been, judges have mentioned that. I don't know if you're thinking about that. Yes, thank you, Senator. I, I've thought about that. Um, I've applied, you know, more than once, and so during that process, I've uh, I've heard the same sort of um, information from other uh, either sitting judges or people who have made the same transition, and so I've kind of prepared myself in advance. But um, even as a prosecutor, you know, you do have a set of uh, friends and social contacts that are that are somewhat personal and unrelated to those you have as a as a lawyer. Uh, at the same time, you know, I do have friends who have become judges, and uh, we were able to still maintain those friendships because they would often be in different counties, and so there wasn't there wouldn't be a conflict. And even if there, to the extent there would be a conflict, we always kept our you know conversations separate from our jobs. So I anticipate that there'll be some isolation, and uh, but I think I'm prepared for that. And at the same time, I I will still try to maintain those friendships, but uh, on a purely social level and. I think that that'll be manageable. I hope it will be. All right. Best to you. Thank you. Any other questions? Senator White, you probably saw uh, the judge on in the nominating board. Right, and asked plenty of questions then. So I will just say good luck in Caledonia County. Thank you, Senator. I guess, I guess uh, and I Essex. Had, and as well, mm -hmm. particularly Essex. <laughs> um, the court reopening is actually a, a, a difficult, uh, it's a subject. And that we're actually, I have a meeting on Monday with Justice Eaton and some others to, to see if there's something we can do in the Budget Adjustment Act to help with reopening. But as a prosecutor, former prosecutor and now a judge and stepping into a new county and being trained remotely. Are the, the things that, what kind of things struck you as um, really needed in order to get back to some form of normalcy? Well, certainly the ability to be in person in some cases is, um, you can't really discount it, but particularly the criminal cases. I think it's it's, a, it's difficult for defendants who are not able to speak with their attorneys in person when they're doing arraignments and the process is first starting. So whatever we can do to get back in person or at least have the option to be in person, I think is, is vital. 
And in terms of what's needed, um, you know, logistically, that's a little hard for me to say. I know that there's been talk about increasing the availability of masks so that, you know, we can uh, be a little more protective while we're in the courthouse. Um, but generally, I'd say whatever we can do to, you know, let people back in the courthouse would be great. I do appreciate that, you know, we've been able to do a great deal of work remotely the last, you know, almost two years now. And I think it's, um, it's, it's at, made it, that availability, I think, can be used even past the pandemic in the future. But um, that's if people are comfortable, you know, appearing remotely. But I think a lot of folks really want to be in person. And if we can make that happen, I think that'll, that'll be the best for all of us. Great. All right. I don't have any other questions. I think you've answered them fine. And Judge Zone, thank you very much for thank you. introducing us. And uh, 